Jubilate, jubilate, jubilate Deo, jubilate, jubilate Deo. Hello, my name is Pamela Dolan, and I'm the rector at the Episcopal Church of St. Martin in Davis, California. I'm delighted to be here, to be part of uh, Climate Week NYC, and to share with you a bit of the journey that St. Martin's has taken to become a zero carbon church. Our story began almost 17 years ago when the parish installed a small solar array on the roof of our administration building. And it culminated in 2020 with recognition by Interfaith Power and Light as a cool congregation with 100% carbon reduction. Looking back on how we did it, a few things are clear to me. For one thing, it really helps to be part of a community that has such a long-standing commitment to environmental sustainability. To share just one example, Davis is believed to be a city that has more bicycles than people and is sometimes called the bike capital of the United States. So it only makes sense that for years we have encouraged parishioners to bike to church instead of driving their cars. And we've done that provide, by providing good, solid bike racks on our campus and even holding an annual blessing of the bicycles. As everyone knows, it's also really important to bring people on board with you before you start an ambitious project. The context today is very different than it was in 2004. So hopefully a lot more faith communities already understand the importance of acting on climate change. I wasn't even a part of St. Martin's back then, so I can't take any credit for this, but I have heard a lot about the wise steps that parish leaders took to encourage the connections between our faith and our growing commitment to environmental stewardship. Study groups, parish-wide forums, energy audits, and careful marshalling of our financial resources all provided evidence that there was widespread support for this work in our congregation. We were engaged by the thought that we could reduce both our carbon footprint and our utility bills. I would also urge congregations to do what you can when you can, even if you don't have the whole plan figured out in advance. Sometimes planning and studying can become an excuse for inaction. Don't let that happen. Our own journey was made up of many small steps, as well as a few big leaps. Sometimes our progress stalled for a while, but the issue was never allowed to be entirely shelved. Some of the significant milestones along our path include a capital campaign in 2010 enabled us to replace leaky single pane windows and outdated and inefficient lighting with energy efficient equivalents. In 2013, we substantially expanded our on-site solar electricity production by installing a second, much larger solar array in the form of a carport over a segment of our parking lot. Financially, this was made possible by entering into an agreement in which St. Martin's committed to buying the clean electricity produced on our property. As you can see, this array provides the added benefit of lots of wonderful shade, a priceless resource in our increasingly long, hot summers. In 2017, the year I arrived at St. Martin's, we replaced the gas-powered HVAC system in our sanctuary with a series of energy efficient electric heat pumps that can be controlled individually. Thus, again, reducing both our energy bill and our carbon use. This was one of those changes that doesn't sound very sexy at first, but that actually has a big impact over time. In 2019, a parishioner with a deep commitment to combating climate change offered to purchase an additional 12 kilowatts of solar panels for the church. 
church leadership not only agreed to this, but we realized that the best way to make the most of his gift was to convert all our remaining gas appliances to electric rather than waiting for them to wear out and need replacement. With those combined final steps, our church effectively became completely solar powered. If you are part of a congregation that wants to become carbon neutral, most likely there will be a cheaper and faster path for you to follow than the one that we took. So please don't be discouraged if it sounds daunting. Today, there are better technologies, better incentives, and the example of others who have charted the course. It typically takes less than a decade to pay for new systems, and savings will continue to accumulate after that. My last word of advice is, don't forget to celebrate. When we reached our big milestone of becoming a zero carbon church in 2020, we wanted the world to know. Of course, we were also in the midst of the pandemic, so we had to scale back any big in-person plans. Still, what a fun day it was when our bishop, the Right Reverend Megan Traquere, came to bless our solar panels. She was such a good sport about being lifted up to the roof via a scissors lift, and she's been very happy to claim her title as the Flying Bishop of Northern California. Like all of you watching this, the people of St. Martin's know that climate change constitutes an existential threat. We know that the crisis we're in is having the greatest impact on the poorest people of the world. We also know that we have a small and shrinking window of time to take action. We are committed to continuing the work toward reducing our environmental footprint in order to create a more just and sustainable world. Throughout this process, we have encouraged parishioners to look at their own habits around transportation, dietary choices, landscaping, and other lifestyle decisions that can affect greenhouse gas emissions and global change. We hope our actions can inspire other churches, faith groups, businesses, and individuals, and our state and federal government to take the bold steps needed to truly care for God's creation. Thank you. Jubilate, 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 Jubil